Hello, good afternoon, and Hello. welcome to Tunisia. So, uh, Rory Charles Graham, also known as Ragan Bone Man, yes. and Ragan Boon as uh, Moon. The story behind the name, to start with. Uh, the story behind the name. So, when I was a child, my grandfather used to watch a show on TV. The TV show was called Steptoe and Son. And the show is about a son and their father who are rag and bone men and they go around collecting other people's junk and things that they don't want anymore. Um, but when I grew up, I started to like blues music and I had people's names like Muddy Waters and BB King and Big Mama Thornton and I thought rag and bone man sounds like a blues name. Right. So that's where the, the name came from. Great. Um, can you tell us about uh, the sweeping success of uh, your first album and especially the first lead single, Human? And um, you know, how do you explain this sweeping success? Success is it about the lyrics? Is it about uh, the fact that it touches the human nature? What is it about? I always explain it like this: You can never say something is going to be a success because it's not really up to you. Like, really, when I put the song out, it, it, took, it took more time than people think it took to get to where it was. You know, we put it out a year before it became properly successful, but once people heard it, it traveled. It was like wildfire. It went around it Europe went and everywhere. everywhere. Right. Um, And like, I'd like to tell you, give you like a, <laughs> in a kind of, you know, really educated way of what, of why, but I don't know. I think it was just, it just pricked people's ears and maybe sounded like something that wasn't around at that time, you know. Um, I don't feel like maybe there were many soulful male voices on the radio at that time. Um, the sound was kind of different. It just, it, it's all about, the right song, the right time, and the right place is, and they just slotted into place. And and the song became everybody else's. Right. Um, you know, it's not really what it was about to me, it became what it's about to everybody else. Right. The same way as it is when everybody's standing in front of you singing it. You know, every, it means something different to every person. So, right. um, and, uh, and that's why, that's probably why it becomes successful, because it's mm -hmm. like universal. Right. Uh, your, your second album, uh, Life by Misadventure, where you have collaborated with uh, uh, artists from uh, different music mm -hmm. genres. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it your uh, background in hip-hop that helped you, uh, I mean, in this? How, how do you explain as well the, the success of your collaboration with uh, musicians and artists from different genres? I, I mean, I feel like the second record was, yeah, I think it followed more of a guitar led actually and it stepped away from hip hop. Um, it kind of followed more of a, I'd say like folk kind of country vibes almost. Um, and I know I come from a background of all different types of music. Mm -hmm. Like my, my, my dad's always been into rock and roll and blues. And my mum was always into like, soul music but folk and everything so I, I feel like I can draw from so many different influences right. you know I don't um, I don't feel like I have to just do one thing so and you have you drunk know. into those influences right? yeah, yeah. And, and this new record that's about to come out next year is again like a totally different sound so um, Right. Um, you have given concerts in, in many countries uh, around the globe. So how does it feel uh, to uh, perform, um, you know, in different countries? Um, well, in the UK you have performed a lot, in Europe. And this is the first time in Tunisia and yeah. in Africa. It's exciting. So what do you expect? I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> you have But no that's idea. That's what's exciting about it, because these, these uh, new faces, Um, completely new audience, so I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't know that huge mm -hmm. amount about the culture and about what the audience will be like. So, what motivated you to choose Tunisia to come and perform here? Well, it's like, it's like Field of Dreams. If you build it, they'll come. Like, they, I got asked, and I, it's for me really exciting thing to come somewhere new. 
Right. Uh, tell us about a concert or a performance that has really left an impact on you. I mean, every performance leaves an impact on me, but I think... A yeah, particular one. I have to say, like, the first time I performed at Glastonbury Festival, mm -hmm. just because of the history, but to be honest, I think my favourite, favourite gigs are the ones that are really small and intimate and we, we did three gigs in London at um, a really famous venue called the Jazz Cafe right and it's like 150 people it's just like no bigger than this room small audience a really small audience and it was it was beautiful right because like you really feel like you sh you're sharing it with people right in front of you so there's something very intimate and quite romantic about that do you have an idea about the hip hop or rap scene here in Tunisia? I don't have no idea. I, I the only music I've heard over here is what my driver played me. Ah, okay. So <laughs> Tunisian music? Yes. Right, wonderful. And um, the, I mean, uh, what do the uh, public expect in this evening in this concert this evening? Um, musically, it will be a hundred percent like. We, we have so much fun on stage. It's, I've been with the same band for like seven, eight years, and um, we all know each other so well that we just love to perform together. So that's what you get. From so us. there will be songs from both albums? From, yeah, from 10 years ago to, right. to now, and then some songs that no one's heard yet that don't exist. So after Tunisia, where to from here? Um, where do we go to? Lithuania. We're, we're Lithuania. To, yes. Right. Well, thank you very much. That's it was right. a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure. Thank you.